folks, Scott here with a new Score Panel project video for October. We are getting close to the holidays. Let's do some coffee and chocolate. Coffee and chocolate gift boxes this month. Really nice gift boxes, perfect for the holiday season. That will hold four or eight little chocolates. We also have a couple of sizes of these coffee pod gift boxes. Let's make one of these first. So I do have a new template for you folks. This template is downloadable over at my website at cardcutups.com. This is the ScorePal Coffee Pod Gift Box Templates. I made a couple of changes on these, but they're very minor. Let's go with the small gift box to begin with. Our template here says we need a 9 inch by 9 inch piece of cardstock. So here we have a piece of 9 inch by 9 inch cardstock. We're going holiday this time. <laughs> Our score lines on this first piece are going to be a half an inch and then two, so that would be two and a half, and then four, that would be six and a half, and then two more would be eight and a half. So let's make those score marks. We've got a half an inch, then two and a half inches, then six and a half inches, and eight and a half inches. Then we'll turn it to the side and our score marks here are two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches and leaving us with one inch. So we'll go at two inches, we'll go at four inches, six inches, this cardstock has a little bit of glitter on it. I hope that's going to fold okay, a little bit up here. And then at 8 inches. Now, if I plan this out right, that should put our little Happy Holidays sign right on the top of the box. <laughs> we'll see how that works. <laughs> now, as usual, we do have a decent portion of pieces that need to be cut away. So we'll flip to our back here, and we're cutting away these two pieces, these three pieces, and this one piece on both sides. One, two, three, four, five, and that single one up there. As usual, I do want to cut away on the inside of our score line, our little score channel that our score tool puts in. We'll cut on the inside. The pieces not marked with the X are the pieces that we're saving. So we'll cut along the inside of that channel. And the same on this side, leaving the channel with the cut away pieces. Should have got my bigger scissors for this one. Then we'll cut away these little bits here, again on the inside and on the inside of our channel. And then this last little piece here on the inside of both edges of our channel. We'll do the same thing to the other side, sticking to the inside. So we're cutting the channel away and there is our piece all cut out. Now our little template shows a little thumb notch cut right here in this piece and four tabs. So let's cut these tabs first. Now you can certainly go ahead and cut these tabs in angles like they show on the template here. I find again that it's pretty easy to get a good fit if you cut instead of an angle away just cut your whole channel away. So I'll do the same on both sides of all four of these tabs here, just cutting that whole channel away. Of course, you can also start at the either side of your channel on the bottom and then go to the middle of the channel at the top. So they are kind of angled just a little bit, but I'm having so much good luck with this cut the whole channel away tip that I think I'm gonna stick with that for now. We'll cut all four of these tabs free. This is starting to look like our regular old single-sided boxes here. 
and cut that whole channel away just to make sure this stays nice and pretty we'll trim those out trim those little pieces off with our scissors and now for the thumb notch thumb notch goes in the middle of this piece so let's grab our score mat pop that in here our middle piece is four inches wide so the center of that is at two inches so I'll just mark a two inch there I'm going to take a one inch hole punch and I'm going to punch that out I'm not going to make a complete half circle I'm going to go a little bit there's my center mark matching my center mark I'll go a little bit less than a whole half circle try to get that right to center there pop that out it's gone now our piece is all cut we can commit the creases we'll take our score tool and fold all of these score lines to the inside of our box the two little flaps on the side the two big flaps that will ultimately be holding this box together then we've got the box itself. Commit those creases. This cardstock seems to be folding quite nicely. No problems here. And yes, <laughs> I got it right. My little happy holidays will appear on the top of this box. <laughs> we'll do a little dry fit here. See how everything fits together. This is what we're going for right here. It looks like everything has been cut properly. That's cute. <laughs> I like that one. That's our dry fit. Let's add our score tape. I think I'll go with my quarter inch score tape for these. Now again, you can follow the template which actually says score tape the two edges of your tabs. Again, like our regular single sided boxes, I like putting my score tape along the folded edge and then at a right angle on the outside. So that'll give us plenty of adhesion for these tabs to hold this box together. Remember that you add your score tape to the outside of your box because these are going to fold inwards and attach to the inside to hold our box together. And then our last tab over here, once more along the fold line and at a right angle to that on the outside. We'll reinforce all of that score tape, burnish it down, and then we will peel up the liner paper. This is a small enough box. I think I can peel up the liner paper on all four sides without incurring any problems. Our liner paper is free. We're going to build this box just like a regular single-sided box. The tabs go inside, line up the edges, press them down to the other side of the front. Line up your edges, press them down. On the back as well, press that down. And then our fourth side, which will complete our box, line up the edges and press it down. We can take our little score tool and just reinforce, burnish all those glue points down. That looks great. Obviously we need to recut that thumb notch because our two tabs went inside there. A pretty easy process of sliding it into your hole punch and matching up your previous punch. There's our hole punch right there. They also suggest that we miter the corners of our front flap as well. So again, I'll put that down on my score mat and I'm going to, let's, let's take a quarter inch off of each side as far as the miter for our flap. We'll just cut from my little mark right to the score line, cut from the mark on the other side, right to the score line, and there's our little box. 
Oh, this cardstock worked so well. Even with the glitter, this cardstock took a nice score and fold. Very nice. That's our box. Now we need our little coffee pod insert. Back to our template. Our coffee pod insert is six and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And it's scored at one and a half inches on all four sides. So here we have a piece of cardstock cut to four and five eighths, four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And we're gonna score all four sides of these at an inch and a half. Use our little score tool, an inch and a half, rotate an inch and a half, rotate an inch and a half, and rotate an inch and a half. Now the center square here is going to be where we are going to punch our holes to hold those little coffee pods. Now our template calls for a one and five eighths inch opening, one and five eighths inch opening. I do not have a one and five eighths inch circle die, but I do have a one and three quarter inch, which is an eighth inch larger. I thought I would check and see if an eighth inch smaller would work. These are actually Hero Arts Nesting Infinity dies. They're circle dies. These are pretty standard, I think. I have another small set of circle dies, and the smallest one in that batch was one and three quarter inches as well. So I went down to one and a half inches, and this is a one and a half inch die, and it is, it just barely fits the bottom of my coffee pod. So that's why I went with the next larger size. This is one and three quarter of an inch circle die. This fits well right down to the top of our coffee pod. So I'm going to line this up with the score marks on our piece. And literally this die happens to come just right to the edges of all our score marks. Let's go ahead and fold all four of our sides. I think you'll be able to see our score marks better if we fold them to begin with. We can always cut them afterwards. There we go. There's our center piece there. And this little one and three quarter inch die fits just inside there. Now the nice part of a Hero Arts die is that the die, the cutting part, is actually on the inside of that circle. So it's actually quite easy to line that up between all of your score marks. Give the tape down. Let's run that through our die cutting machine. Of course, you could hand cut these circles if you have a circle cutter. I was trying to make this just as easy for everybody as it could possibly be. I think most of us have circle die cuts. Most of us have a die cutting machine. We'll run that first hole through. Worked very nicely. Now we should be able to line up the second die cut against the edges of our score marks. It goes right up against the edge there. It looks like there's no clearance, but there'll be plenty of room for us to fold and add our little coffee pods. Run that through our die cutting machine one more time. And here we have our other little pod hole cut open. Now it's a simple matter of making our tabs on this. Again, cutting either side of our score channel. They're even more obvious once you've made the folds. Once you commit your crease, those channels are even more obvious. We don't have to be quite so specific with this interior piece because I'm not actually even going to glue this together. We're just gonna leave it as a insert that you can easily take out and then use the box 
for other uses. <laughs> we'll trim those pieces off, fold our little insert piece together. The side tabs go in, the side flap goes down, the side tabs go in, the side flap goes down. There's our little insert piece. It fits perfectly inside of our box. And you can see that our little coffee pods fit perfectly in those two holders. The top closes. Throw a bow on that and you've got a lovely little gift. I really like giving little coffee pods to uh, my associates at work and everybody I work with. We do have a pod machine in the office and I think a little special Irish cream coffee for those who are coffee drinkers is a very welcome little gift. I love that box. I love that it doesn't have a top. I love the top that folds over. This is extremely sturdy, very nice. There's nothing shaking or rattling around in there. There's a nice little coffee for two gift box, a little coffee pod gift box. Happy holidays. <laughs> Let's make our big one. Let's make our big four serving coffee pod box. That template again is of course on this same ScorePal coffee pod gift box templates. Again, this is available at my website, cardcutups.com. It says we need a piece of cardstock 12 inches by 9 inches. So that's where we start a piece of cardstock 12 inches by 9 inches. And our template shows us to score this at 2 inches and 2 inches on the 12 inch side. 2 inches and 2 inches on the 12 inch side. I'll score it at 2 over here and without moving it I'll score it at 10 over here which is 2 inches from 12. And then we'll rotate and do the long score marks which are 2, 2, 2, 2, and 1. So if we just do 2 across, it should leave us 1 at the end. So we've got 2 inches all the way down, 4 inches, 6 inches, and 8 inches. Now you'll notice the big difference on this one from our little one is that we don't have these little side tabs here just because we're using a full 12 inch piece of cardstock. Though we do have pieces that need to be cut away, we will lose this piece and this piece, this piece and this piece. That's all we lose with this larger coffee pod gift box. We'll cut those away, again, staying on the inside. Nope, 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 nope. Wait, 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 wait. That was a close one. Pay attention, Scott. <laughs> on the edge that has the one inch score, that's where we're gonna cut our papers away. That small one inch, that two inch, that small one inch, that two inch. Just make sure you're getting rid of the correct pieces on your scored piece. It shows our tabs on this piece are here, 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 and here, 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 and here. Again, you can miter your little tabs if you like. Again, I'm just going to stick with that old cut out the channel. We'll get rid of our little extra pieces here. We do have a thumb notch in our big piece right here. This piece is eight inches, so we'll mark our center of that at four inches. And we'll take our little one inch punch again and punch a little thumb notch. Of course, it does show this piece has a couple of miters on the corners. So let's again mark those at a quarter inch. We'll mark this one at a quarter inch as well. We'll take our scissors and cut right up to our score line there on both sides. And let's commit the crease on all of these. And let's give this a quick dry fit. The flaps will fold in, the top will fold over, the tab will fold down. That looks good. Looks like everything fits together well. Let's add our score tape to this. 
We'll burnish our score tape down. Again, I am using quarter inch score tape on all of my tabs here. Pull up the liner paper, tuck your tab inside, match up your edges, give it a press, burnish all of our score tape down, and there you go. Now, this does not feel as sturdy as this one does, and I discovered it's because it doesn't have those extra side flaps. It really make a difference as far as making this box feel sturdy. So before we go on and create the insert for this, I have two pieces of cardstock here. These are cut at two inches, just under two inches, by one inch. And we are going to use these to create our own flaps on the side. So we are going to score these at a half an inch. We'll score the other one at a half an inch also. Commit those creases and we're going to glue those inside the edges of our box so it will give us that little extra reinforcement on the top. For this I am going to reach for some liquid glue, just so I have a little extra wiggle room with trying to line up this added tab. Slide that inside there, try and match the edges nice and cleanly. And because I'm using the same pattern paper, you almost can't tell that that's an added piece. We'll do the same on the other side. Add liquid glue to one half of the piece and slide that in on the other side of our box. Once you're happy with the placement of both of those, I'll go ahead and burnish them down just a little bit. Make sure they're not going to move. And that is our box. It feels much sturdier no wobble that lid doesn't fall down any further let's make the insert for that according to our template again our insert is 10 and 7 8 inches by 4 and 7 8 inches and we are going to again score these all at an inch and a half let's go ahead and commit those creases so you guys can see those score marks for lining up our die cut. Again, I'll line that up the same way. Again, this is an inch and three quarter die cut. I'll line that up the same way, right up against the edges of all of our score marks. I will go to the other side for my second die cut. Again, line your die cut up against the edges of your score marks and then we can space out our two center holes. Now there is a little bit more room. If I put this here and match up right to the edge of that one, I can draw a line on the outside of that. And if I do the same over here, you can see that we've got a little extra room in the center. So I'm gonna like divide that and move that line to the inside of my circle die cut still keeping the edges of that die cut lined up with the edges of our scores. And then our fourth hole, we can again line up on the inside of that circle, tape that down and send that through. And here we have our four little die cut pieces. I find using that die cut is just so much easier. This template shows you where you would put the middle of each circle if you were doing one and five eighths inch circles. Since I went to one and three quarter inches circles, it's easy to line them up as far as that open part of our insert goes. So again, we are going to cut our tabs on this. Actually, our template shows us cutting them this way. <laughs> it doesn't really matter too awful much. This is just the insert piece. Reinforce those score marks. Commit those creases along the edges here. I could have committed those creases again after I ran it through my die cutting machine. Just pop these on the inside. Voila! That's where it goes. Four coffee pods. 
a little Irish cream coffee always helps me get through the day. <laughs> These are great. This little gift box is so much more adorable than a box like this as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> That's our coffee pod gift boxes. I really like these. I think they are so much fun. I like the fact that the boxes have lids that are attached. A ribbon, a bow, you can decorate these up as much as you like, as little as you like. Let's eat some candy now. <laughs> now these little candy gift boxes are basically just the same as a plain old single-sided box with a little insert in the center and a cutout in the top. These are very, very simple. I went ahead and sized mine to fit these little Ferrero Rocher chocolates. I think these make for great gifts. If you're buying somebody four chocolate truffles from Godiva, they'll come in their own little gorgeous gift box. But if you buy a bunch of Ferrero Rocher in a larger quantity and want to split them up for gifts, this is the perfect way to do that. I did kind of set this up myself for this, and we are following right along with our original ScorePal Basics box making, the single-sided boxes that we did two months ago. This is based on those, but instead of showing you all of the formulas, <laughs> I'm going to give it to you right out with this second template. Of course, this template will also be available on my website at cardcutups.com. We're going to make the small chocolate gift box. This is three and a half by three and a half by one and a half. You can figure that out. Our bottom piece is six inches by six inch cardstock scored all four sides at an inch and a quarter. Our top is cut at five and five eighths by five and five eighths and scored on all four sides at one inch and then we die cut our window in the center. Our insert is three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths scored on all four sides at just a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to die cut four inch and a half circles in the center. So we're going to that little smaller circle die cut for this. If I go quickly through this, it's just because we've already made single sided boxes. I have my six inch by six inch cardstock. We score that at an inch and a quarter on all four sides. I already have my other pieces cut, so we'll just go ahead and score all of them together. The top is five and five eighths by five and five eighths. These are scored at one inch. Now this is going to give us a little candy box that has an edge where the top is a little bit smaller than the bottom, so you don't have to put any thumb notches in it. And let's go ahead and score our insert. This is three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths, and we're gonna score all four sides at a quarter of an inch. Let's go to our bottom and we assemble this simply the same way that we would assemble any of our normal single-sided boxes. That's our cuts. We will commit the creases, give it a little dry fit, add our score tape to our tabs, I think I'll jump to my 8 inch score tape since these are smaller boxes. I just move my 8 inch score tape to the top of my stacker. We'll burnish down our score tape, pull up the liner, and form our box. And there is the bottom of our chocolate box. We'll take our top piece now. Now this is the piece that we're going to cut an opening in the center of this. So let's go ahead and commit our creases on this just so I think that helps you guys see where those score marks are. And to find our placement for our square cutout, I'm actually using, this is a two and a half inch square die cut. You could cut these by hand. I am trying to make this as simple as possible, not only for me, but for you as well. <laughs> so for the placement of this, it's really easy to just take a ruler and go from corner to corner, a light line from corner to corner, and then you can center your die cut just by matching the corners to your two lines. 
see that right there match those corners up to those two cross lines and that'll put it right in the center of your box top let's run that through our die cutting machine and that cuts our centerpiece right out of the center of our box top we'll go ahead and add some acetate to that opening you can go ahead and just erase those extra pencil lines from the back you want it clean and pretty <laughs> i'll use my eight inch score tape again just go around all four edges give that score tape a good burnish down pull up our liner paper and then i have a little piece of acetate here this is cut at three inches by three inches we have a two and a half inch opening here so we can just lay our acetate covering up those strips of score tape lay it down fits beautifully i'll flip that over give it one more burnish on the top that'll hold our acetate in there perfectly and we will then cut our channels away add some score tape and form the top side of our box here just like any other single-sided box and there's our top for our candy box fits on the bottom these are very simple exactly like our single-sided boxes just with an insert cut in that top piece let's make our little insert this is three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths scored at a quarter inch all the way around commit the crease on all four sides that'll show us our score marks better there's our insert we are going down to a inch and a half inch die so this is the next size smaller as far as the hero arts infinity guy dies go so the same will hold true we should be able to go right up to the corners of our little box piece here and die cut four circles in the four corners of our insert piece. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. Let's go ahead and cut out our tabs. Since these are such short, short, short little edges, I am going to go ahead and glue these together, but I won't glue it inside of the box. So you can still take this insert out and use the box for something else after the chocolates have been eaten. I tell you, I have been dying to eat these chocolates. I bought these all about a week and a half ago when I was at the drugstore. And they've been sitting in my craft room. I've been dying to eat them. <laughs> as soon as this video is over, you know where those are going to go. <laughs> Just a simple piece of score tape on each of our tabs. Glue our tabs in. And that's our little insert to hold our candies in place. There you go. Fits inside beautifully. The top fits on top perfectly. A very holiday type box our candies fit inside those little holders I wouldn't put a plain chocolate in there I would only put something that actually has a little paper cup on the bottom of it they don't go anywhere they all fit like perfectly there's a little wiggle there but they're not rolling around they're not flipping upside down this is our small chocolate gift box I'm not going to show you how to make the big gift box but I have included those dimensions in our template here. A couple of things about the large gift box. Oh my God, am I gonna untie this bow? I guess I have to. When you die cut this top frame, you can either cut it out by hand or you can do two die cuts with your square die and then join them together. That's all I did, use the die cuts on the two ends and then join those together. And then on the inside, because your little insert piece is so large, it has a tendency to sag here in the bottom so the candies will pop out and around. Now you could make this inner piece with two of the smaller ones, but I do have dimensions to make create this all as one to defeat the sag. 
I just attached four little layers of foam tape right in the center. That keeps the center part of our insert from slipping and sliding and sagging down so that the candies will still be held in position once everything is loaded in and the top is attached. I don't know if I'll ever be able to retie this bow on this. Did I just screw myself good? <laughs> Probably. Here we go. I actually tied that bow again. <laughs> I'm shocked. I need to trim off this leg, but I'll never be able to tie it again if I do. And let me tell you, I am eating these chocolates as soon as I finish this video. <laughs> so that's some coffee and chocolates for you this month. Nice little coffee and chocolate gift boxes all done up with some holiday cheer. These are lots of fun. Remember, you can pick up both of these templates on my website. You can download them, print them out for yourself, have them on hand. I love these little fold over gift boxes. Much more uses than just for a coffee pod. And who doesn't like getting a nice box of candy at Christmas time? I love Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, folks. I hope you like these boxes as much as I do. I think they're really terrific all the way around. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this video. It lets YouTube know that it should share this video with other like-minded people. I think next month we'll move into some more unique gift boxes and some hostess gifts. We are moving towards the holiday season here. It's a perfect time of year for small little gifts for your neighbors, your friends, and your co-workers. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me here today. It means so much to me. Please remember to like me, list me, pin me, post me share me with all of your friends don't run with scissors and as always i wish you happy crafting For more detailed instructions, better pictures, and downloadable files, please visit my website at cardcutups.com.